everyone, my name is Chelsea Nebby and today I'm going to talk to you about my MCAT study plan. Stay tuned. I'm sure you guys are like, why is she so excited to talk about like studying? <laughs> In fact, oh man, there's this guy on YouTube. I think his name is called Doc Osare. I don't know how to pronounce it. I really don't. I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, I'll probably put the name up, but it's D-O-C-O-S-S-A-R-E-H. I didn't follow him, I didn't subscribe to his channel. I think I found out about his channel when he was already in residency, so like, his advice, it wasn't necessarily outdated, but like, if I subscribed at the time that I found out about him, I'd be receiving residency advice as opposed to med school advice. But anyway, he has like a whole like, I mean, his YouTube channel is just so extensive. Like, it's what I aspire to, you know? And it's so funny because he used to always end his videos with like happy studying. I think that's what he said. And I'm just like, nobody's happy when they're studying. <laughs> I was just like, I was such a sourpuss. But he would always end like happy studying. I'm like, shut up, nobody likes to study. <laughs> Okay, but no, I'm excited because I just feel like my my studying plan is so cool. Like, it's just so golden. Like, I don't know. So here's the thing, right? My study, my study plan was broken up into a part one and part two. I'm going to have some sort of link. Maybe it'll be a Google Drive to the MCAT uh, brochure. It's not even a brochure. I'm, I do too much. It's just a page of advice, right? And then a worksheet on the back that detail. It, it was key advice that I wish I knew before going into the MCAT. I don't know why I'm wearing this sweater. It's so hot. But I have to wear the same thing for every playlist because, you know, that's what I give you guys. So anyway, yes, my, my, MCAT studying plan was broken up into two weeks and the reason why and I guess I'll get into that as I discuss how I studied but I initially planned to study for the MCAT in, in eight weeks that right there is a bad idea you know what here's the thing if you guys watched my um, how tips on applying you'll see that like I stand for SDN so much right I don't know why people hate on SDN. It's such a wealth of information. It's such a wealth of information. The reason why I stand on SDN is because I believe it saves my MCAT. They had so, <laughs> they had so many horror stories on that website that you're just like, this one girl, I'm sorry y'all, I'm sorry. It's like so, it's so real on SDN. This one girl, <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. She studied for the MCAT. She gave herself, I think, eight weeks, either eight weeks or four weeks. <laughs> either eight weeks or four weeks. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna say eight weeks, right? Most people on SDN and in real life will say give yourself three to four months, right? So that's like 12 to 16 weeks. That's what most people will say, right? And I, I support that. I support that. And, and mind you, that's three to four months of uninter uninterrupted time, right? I believe in that. So she gave herself eight weeks to study for the MCAT. And since she was a psych major, she was like, she doesn't have to study the psychology section because she's a psych major. Okay. She scored within the 11th. <laughs> Sorry. She scored within the 11th percentile. Y'all. Y'all, there's an 11th percentile for a reason. I'm sorry, I know this is so rude, but it's like, it's way too comical for me. Like, I, don't, I know that's rude. I know it's like really sad to laugh at other people's misfortune, but like, it's just so sad. Like, I'm not even laughing at her. I'm laughing because like, you could tell she didn't know. She just didn't know what kind of beast the MCAT was. You know what I mean? Like, even if she wasn't scoring, shooting for a 528, you could tell, right? So what had happened was, it was a thread where everybody was talking about like, their timeline of studying or like the length of time they were trying to study um, and their study plan. And so she put down that study plan. She's like, I'm taking it in like two weeks. I'll let you guys know how it goes. So she comes back and she's like I scored in the 11th percentile and it was actually really beautiful because this other girl came in through the thread she was like listen because she was like I don't think I could do medicine like I think it's it for me da, 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 da. this other girl comes sweeping through she was like I was literally in your shoes a couple years ago I took the MCAT the first time and I tanked it I was super depressed I didn't know what to do then I regrouped and I realized that the MCAT was a beast and I redid it and I think she got like a 528 sorry not 520 like a 520 um I think she at least got above a 515 right and so it's kind of like 
When I tell you that the MCAT can really take you off guard, it can really take you off guard. I thought I could study for this exam in eight weeks and listen, it's not a good idea. You, and here's, here's the thing that really, really presses me, right? When I was on SDN, I would see some, I, I saw, I would see every now and then, like most people will be like, oh, I'm taking like 12 to 16 weeks to study for the exam. And that would get me really nervous because I'm like, oh man, like I'm, I'm not taking up as much time. Like maybe I'm making a mistake. But the thing was, my last day of school, between my last day of school and the beginning of my internship, I was about to start that MDPHE themed internship that year. So between my last day of school and the internship, I only had eight weeks. So I was like, I gotta get it done, right? Every now and then on SDN, you'll find that one person who's like, yeah, I studied in, in eight weeks and I got a 520. And that kind of made me feel good, but listen, you're not that person. Okay, okay, maybe you're that person, right? I never like to limit you guys. Maybe you're that person. Chances are you're not. Chances are you're not. Don't, don't play yourself. This is not the time to play yourself. It's just not the time. You know what I'm saying? Why, why jeopardize your chances of greatness when you can just, you know what I mean? be great and like set yourself up for like ultimate success you know what i mean i meant this and there's a lot of people you'll meet who and also mind you mind you sometimes for example right i had this friend now this is no shade i love this girl she's very sweet when she talks about how she studied for the mcat she she always says that she studied in three weeks right and she got a 513 which is not a bad score at all she's in an mdphd program right now she always talks about it by saying that she studied for three weeks now if I'm hearing that and she's like, oh, you studied for three weeks and you got a 513, then sure, I'm likely to believe that I can get a 520 in eight weeks, right? What she typically does not say is that she took an eight week MCAT course before studying for three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Like when people talk about like their crazy success stories, you don't know what they're withholding. They could be outright lying just to make themselves look good. I'm not saying she was lying. With her, I, I asked her, I'm like, but didn't you take a course? Like, doesn't that mean you studied for more time? She said that she wasn't studying when she was in the course, which I think is valid because a lot of people don't take the course seriously. But I still think when you're in the course, even if you don't even write anything down, you're at least passively soaking in information at the very least, you know what I mean? And I have a hard time believing that she didn't do anything throughout the course. Maybe she didn't utilize it to the best of her her ability, but I have a hard time believing that she did absolutely nothing. In reality, she took 11 weeks to score a 513. You know what I mean? Like when people tell you their crazy success stories, you don't know how much of it is true. Another another success story, right? When I was at that internship, the MDPHE themed internship, I met a guy. We were both shadowing this pediatric neurosurgeon, and it's funny because I met him again at another at an MDPHE interview, at an MSTP interview, actually. I won't say where he goes right now, but it was so cool because when I met him at the interview, I was like, you look so familiar. I was like, I was like, you look so familiar. And then I was like, did you go to this school? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I remember we shot up together and like, it was wild. Anyway, it was so cool. It was so cool seeing him at the MSCP. But when I met him, during my internship, I was telling him that I was studying for the MCAT and he had just taken the MCAT and he got a 520 and he said he studied in two weeks. He said he studied in two weeks, right? Okay. Now I can't even verify how accurate that statement was, but let's put that in context. He was a chemical engineer. He tutored students in chemistry and physics. So in those two weeks, all he studied was biology and psychology, right? And cars. So. You know, even if he was or was not lying about the two week time period that he actually studied, he has been tutoring students in chemistry and physics for years. I think he said like three or two years. You know, he doesn't even have to refresh those subjects. They're solid. You know what I mean? When you teach somebody something, and I'll talk about that when I get into like how to study playlists. When you teach some, somebody something, it's way better than just trying to learn it for a test. So. When people tell you, you know, like, oh, I got a 528 in four weeks. Like, listen, you're not them. 
you're not them. If you happen to be them, fine, but like don't don't do that to yourself. Now let me let me actually get into it. I'm 11 minutes into the video and like I haven't even begun talking about what the video is about. I use Kaplan Books. I'm not really even sure why. I think it was just they offered a free course in my school, so I was more familiar with them, even though I didn't take the course. And the course wasn't free. I'm sorry, the course wasn't free. I think it was discounted, but it was still like a thousand dollars where the regular price was like two thousand. I don't know, but I didn't get it anyway. And yeah, they I use their books. I think another good course is Princeton Review. So basically what they say, word on the street is there's three brands that I know of. Kaplan, Princeton Review, and Exam Crackers. Princeton Review is like a textbook. Exam Crackers is like the most condensed version of the textbook that you can find. Kaplan is right in the middle. I loved Kaplan. I It was very readable. They had a lot of like little tips and tricks on the side for how to apply what you're reading when you actually take the test. What's important, what's not important, how they tend to ask these questions. I liked Kaplan, that was my experience. Another thing that I liked about Kaplan was there, I felt like a lot of the people who I knew, I think that if you do a survey of people who took courses for the MCAT, most people will say that they took Kaplan. That's, that's just my um, best guess, right? So, um, I took Kaplan. One other thing that I loved about them, th they had to have made it for like a type A personality like myself. Each sub There were like six subject books. There was chemistry, physics, biology, biochemistry, psychology. I think psych and sociology was the same book. And then cars, was there also cars? I actually forgot, I didn't know there was a cars book, so I never ended up studying cars and I still regret it. Don't skimp out on cars. There was a lot of online advice that was like, don't worry about cars, BS, okay? Some people were like, you could just read Times Magazine every day to prepare for cars. Like, no, take the cars textbook, okay? It's very, very helpful. I get so heated when I talk about them, God, it's fine. So yeah, the Kaplan textbook, I forget how many subject books there were. I wanna go with seven, including six plus cars, basically. But each subject book had 12 chapters in the book, right? And so it was very easy to schedule my time. I'm talking about like every single subject book had 12 chapters. So what I did was I would finish one subject book a week, I would read two subjects a day, two chapters a day. So that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? And then on Sunday, I would take a practice test. Now, my M my medical school advisor, when she was giving me advice on how to take the MCAT, she said that you should always have one day a week where you rest and do nothing. I didn't do that because my rest day was actually a day that I took the practice test. And on top of that, I soon realized, which I'll get into, when you take the practice test, you have to take the practice test and review the practice test. Now the practice test is already like seven hours. Reviewing it can be just as long. So, you know, it's it's really like an all day affair. So I didn't really take days off and like that, I don't, I don't advise that, but it's like, you know, do what you can. I don't advise that. I think having a rest day is important so that you come back recharged. But I was just kind of like, let's just, Let's just get it done, Let's just get it done, right? And my mom is my witness. Yes, my mom is my witness. I'm a slow reader and I'm not ashamed. Audible will sponsor me one day. Audible will sponsor me one day because they've elevated my life. Because I can't read that fast, I just can't, okay? It's fine. There are multiple intelligences. I have a really great musical intelligence. I have a logical intelligence. Verbal is shaky, verbal is shaky. So um, I'm not ashamed of it. I can't read very well. My mom and my sister can like devour an entire, you know, 500 page novel in like a week. It would take me a lifetime, so I've just accepted my fate. Even my brother, my brother used to read so much, and like for me, it was so, it's still so hard, it's still so hard. So yeah, it took me 10 hours to read two chapters of Kaplan. Now, some, I think, oh yes, that's why there were six subject books. It, there was a general, chemistry was split up into two books. There was general chemistry and organic chemistry. Organic chemistry was very quick, very quick to go through. I don't know, I think it was like 10 pages per chapter, whereas most of the other subjects were like 20 pages per chapter. And in particular, I think physics was, was pushing it to like 25 pages per chapter. I will say because of time, I never ended up finishing the psychology, psychology, sociology book. I think I had like two, three chapters left, but 
I just didn't have time. And honestly, as I was reading, because I'm very interested in psychology and sociology, I was reading it, as I was reading it, I was like, I already know a lot of this stuff. Like a lot of this stuff is like common sense for me because I'm already very interested and passionate about that. Yes, that was, that was like the foundation for my first eight weeks. My first Kaplan practice test was a 498. I took their free test. I got a 498 if you guys are interested in like what my first score was. I don't think your first, your first score really matters mind you that was my first score after i had done my first week of reading the book so i started off with biology after my biology after i read that first subject of biology i took my first practice test so technically you could say that i had already started studying but it's whatever so i got a 498 if that makes a difference to you i personally don't think it makes a difference i was scheduled to take my test on june i think june 12th and i realized i wasn't ready i don't know how i realized i think it was honestly just like i don't even really like believe in god like that but i think that it was just like a gift from god <laughs> like an awakening like girl you're not ready what had happened was i had like two breakdowns i had two breakdowns when i was studying for this test my first breakdown i just realized that you know what take a day off chill out relax girl i just i just i think that was a practice test day and i just skipped it i was like girl like take a day off it's not gonna hurt no that that actually happened in the middle of the week and i had to make that up later did it no no sorry that was i don't know doesn't even matter but i took a day off my second breakdown was when I knew I had to postpone the test because I was feeling really depressed. I was like, I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't know if it's gonna work, right? And I knew I wasn't ready by June. I wasn't sure what it was in my spirit that told me that I wasn't ready. I, it wasn't because I, I was two weeks away from my scheduled test day. So I pushed it further. And mind you, I, I'm just letting you guys know, it costs money to reschedule the test. It does. It costs me like $300 to reschedule. And I get it. Not everybody has that kind of money. So. I'm telling you now, schedule more than enough time. You don't wanna press yourself, you know what I mean? It's too much pressure. And I love pressure, I really love pressure cooker situations, but I was gambling. You know, there's, there's <laughs> pressure is one thing, gambling is another. I was gambling, don't gamble. On top of that, I also wanna say, life happens. You may think that you'll have eight weeks all to yourself, but no, life happens. You may have to do X, Y, and Z when you're trying to study for this test, in fact, Again, like I told you, I was playing 10 hour days to study for this test. And the way I know it was 10 hours was I would go with my mom to work, I would sit at her office, and I would study until I was done. If I got done earlier than she did, then I would go home. Most times I didn't. My mom works for 10 hours a day, I got to feel what that was like. It's not fun. It's not. It's really not fun, okay? I was, I was tethered to a desk, reading, taking notes. What I would do is I would read, take the questions in the book, okay? Don't skip out on them. Take the questions in the book. I took the questions in the book. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I just read, but I'm a slow reader, so it took me like 10 hours to get through 40 pages and 20 questions. Um, I feel like I did more. I feel like there was something else I did, but I can't think of it now, so um, yeah. And um, on top of that, to get back to the fact that life happens, you guys may not realize that life happens, but let me tell you something, right? I had intended to begin studying as soon as school ended for me, but Obama came to town. I'm not lying to you. Obama came to our school's graduation. I was like, I'm not missing that. I had friends who were graduating that year and Obama was there. So I'm like, I'm not missing that. I literally missed a week of studying because I had to prepare for Obama coming to my school. Life happens, okay? So I, I actually had attempted to study for the MCAT in seven weeks. You know what I mean? Like, don't let that be you. Life happens, schedule more than enough time. My battery's about to die, my card is filling up, I gotta go. I know I promised you the full study plan, I lied. I'll get back to you with the second half and some more advice and more rants. Like if you wanna like, share if you wanna share, subscribe if you wanna subscribe, tweet me a question if you have it, mdphdme. My website is the same thing, mdphdme.com. Ask me a question if you want, read my blog post if you feel like it. I gotta go, bye.